Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I've taken a segment from my two hour breakdown of the Dreamforce Tableau keynote. In this section, I take a look at Tableau Pulse. I ended up breaking it down in a lot more detail than I have done in the past. So that's why I've sort of taken the snippet out from the two hour video and I've put it up here on its own. If you've already watched that in full, you don't need to watch this, but if you're just looking for information about Tableau Pulse, I think you're gonna find this interesting. As ever, let's get started. And this is why today we're really excited to share with you our newest application, Tableau, Tableau Pulse. Pulse. Tableau Pulse is a whole new experience for data that's powered by generative AI. It's personalized for every single user, contextual to the task at hand, and it is smart. It enables you to pull out insights from your data automatically. I'm gonna pause this here and just say, I've actually done a video breaking down the Tableau Pulse announcement from Tableau Conference. It goes into it in pretty much the same detail. If there's anything new in here, I will put it out now, but I think this is gonna be the same demo as we saw back then, so let's have a look. So you guys wanna see it? Yep. Yeah, all right. Homer, are you ready to show it? Absolutely. All right, please welcome Homer, Homer Wang. Homer Wang. All right, thank you, Francois, and hello, Dreamforce. I'm Homer, a product manager here building Tableau Pulse and Tableau AI for all of you. Now, I hope you're just as thrilled as I am. So this is an interesting um, starting point. Number one, we're in Slack. This is what this interface looks like. I'm actually a customer of Slack and um, this looks like a new interface. It looks like an updated version of Slack that is, I think, trying to replicate Teams. I think they announced some sort of change that makes Slack look more like Teams for the companies that kind of, um, you know, really love Teams, but don't want to let go of it and want something that looks like that in order to switch. So um, really nice. Obviously, I think it's quite a polished setup. So what we have here is a Tableau app inside of Slack. And it's obviously uh, the way Slack works with Tableau is, <laughs> my watch is coming out. The way uh, Slack works is that there's a Tableau app, which creates a one-to-one -one chat with you as an app. So that's what you can see here on the left-hand side. And in essence, in there is where it delivers you personalized uh, messages and notifications. It doesn't yet um, feed those in entirely into the channels setup. I think it can post alerts into channels, but specifically these sorts of uh, insights come to you via the app. To show you how we're reimagining the way anyone interacts with data. So, demo hats on, and let's dive right in. Like many of you, I start my day in Slack. With Pulse, I can get a personalized digest on the key metrics that I follow and matter mm -hmm. most to me. Now, AI looks at what's happening across the board and delivers a crisp summary up front so that I know what to focus on in just two seconds. And here, I see an unusual uptick. In so let's, uh, let's just let's interrogate sort of what this is doing. So it's interesting because there's no um, visual element, but we do get this sort of uh, call out of this unit indicator that we saw earlier on. So device sales, 1,675 units. You get this prompt that says, is it helpful or not? Um, and at the very top, we got this Tableau Pulse Digest for September 12th, 2023. So this is something new. A Pulse Digest suggests that it's going to be sending you a daily update and it's a digest of the things you care about. So device sales, campaign ROI and regional revenue seem like three separate metrics, hence they're bold. So device sales are seeing an unusual spike uh, since the beginning of this week, while quarterly regional revenue and monthly campaign ROI are steadily increasing. So these are three metrics and it's basically tell you what's going on. Additionally, seven of your 12 other metrics have changed, four favorably and three unfavorably. So that's a pretty nice summary. What is interesting is there's no visual element here. So it would be nice to be able to see those metrics like as a scorecard here, like just show me all 12, uh, show me the four favorable, the three unfavorable at the top, and then um, talk about the other seven, um, you know, just that are just doing nothing basically. <laughs> um, so I think that would be kind of nice. And maybe this is where the product is heading, but you know, immediately here, well, maybe that's what this, actually, no, that is what this breakdown is below. The, the line below it makes it feel like it's something separate, but actually it's one thing. So then we do get a breakdown. Again, nothing visual, which is a shame. You get a text breakdown. So device sales, uh, that's what we've got there. Regional revenue we've got there as well. 
And so let's see what else is in this. Let's keep carrying on. Device sales. Well, as a regional sales manager, this is great news. But I do need to understand a little more than that. So let's click in. And here on the metric cool. detail page, I so I clicked on Slack and it took them straight to a page in Tableau Pulse. So I'm sure it won't be that smooth. It kind of animated in between the two. That's definitely something like a Figma interaction. But uh, ultimately, you go to, to Tableau Pulse. This Tableau Pulse interface feels almost entirely new. It doesn't feel native to Tableau. Um, super interesting. There's a whole social element to this. There's a whole profile element to this. If this is the new interface coming to Tableau Cloud, that's going to be super interesting. But you do get this uh, lead in with this sort of visual element that I was talking about. So you can actually see the general trend, the kind of uh, general area that your data performs in, and you kind of see um, a breakdown at the top. If you've used something like Alteryx Auto Insights, this is very similar. But of course, uh, <laughs> where Tableau definitely has an upper hand here is that they've got the entire Tableau server and uh, charting capability to boot as well. So, um, you know, with something like uh, Alteryx Auto Insights, what, what you have to do is uh, essentially, you know, push the data into Auto Insights from the uh, uh, output of an Alteryx uh, flow, or you can feed it specific data sources to look at. But even then, um, this just feels a little bit more sort of um, smoother. The experience feels smoother, even though it might actually be doing the same thing, but just not as advanced. Anyway, let's keep uh, let's keep having a look. You can clearly see this latest anomaly picked up by Tableau and visually explained to me. I can also explore metadata on the metric that our analyst friends help define mm -hmm. so that I can trust what I'm seeing. And if I want, I can... I think the fact that metadata is buried there is actually a bad thing, right? The device sells, no one clicks on that eye indicator. How often do you see indicators like that? You just blow right past them. If anything, um, if it's like any sort of social or digital feed, what you do is you look at the things that are calling out at you. So the the green uh, and the big numbers, that's where you go to. You, kind of, you know, if you tell me where do I find the information about uh, this data source, um, you'd look around a little bit and you'd spot that eye and then you'd click on it, but it's not natural. I kind of feel like it should just sit up there at the top, device sales, published by, owned by, and the kind of general metrics, and then a sh uh, like show data metadata, like just call out that you are going to see the metadata for this data set, rather than this very sort of clean interface, which feels like a UX win, but it's not a very useful, like in business, you need context up front, you don't want to have to click in to see context, that makes it two activities that are unnecessary, one to click in, one to click out, Um. so yeah, nice interface, but I just think like, just just put that metadata in it right up front. Tableau, Tableau Cloud, Tableau Server does that already. And um, with certified data sources, you can just go and see some of that metadata immediately. So um, would love to see that here. Filter this view to my own liking while respecting my security context. Okay. Now that I know what I'm looking at, what about the why? Well, guided questions just by AI help me phrase what I want to ask, but don't necessarily know how. Mm -hmm. And here, I'm interested to know which products drove the sudden increase. Right. And with one click, I get a plain natural language insight accompanied by visualizations, all coming from Tableau. There was a subtle um, sort of broken user interface there. Um, when, it, when you clicked, the activity happened below. So if... If we just go back a few seconds, this is like ridiculously detailed um, product feedback, but hey, this is the keynote breakdown. We can do this here. So here you can see the window, the fold as it were. So everything in the window is as is, but then if you click which products drove this sudden increase, essentially the activity happens out of the fold, right? It kind of feels like the page should scroll so you see that. It's one of those sort of, sort of let's say, slightly difficult but annoying uh, things to achieve in web design where you're always keeping the user in context of what they're asking for. And um, when you click on that, I kind of feel like maybe the uh, thing should load the new inside at the top and the old thing should go at the bottom. Uh, it's sort of unintuitive or click on it, but then scroll the page down so the user sort of sees that story being told sort of vertically or goes to the right or goes to the left, go wherever you want, but just make it more obvious. If you see this interaction, uh, he clicks and then it goes over to uh, the bottom, but we have to then scroll down to see it. So watch this. What I want to ask, but don't necessarily know how. 
So here we go. And you, here, you I'm in. interested to know which help. products drove the sudden increase. So and with one clicks. click, I get a plain but natural language insight accompanied by visualization, all coming from Tableau. Now this insight here shows me the top drivers behind this change, okay. e-phones and Simpson phones. Well, like Ryan said earlier, these smart devices, they're all the buzz these days. And of course, we all have our own questions too. Now in this case, I'm wondering if we fulfill these orders. So I can simply start by typing in Pulse where smart and contextual recommendations come up at every step with the help of AI. Okay, so let's just stop this for a second and make sure. Will we fulfill phone orders? Inventory fill rate, North American phone. What is projected inventory fill rate? Is there a seasonality in inventory fill rate? Okay, so basically the context here is You've seen you've seen an increase in certain sales, and then you're basically asking, "Hey, are we are we going to be able to meet these orders?" And by asking the question, Tableau, let's call it Pulse, but it's actually GPT, um, has come up with three perspectives. Let's say inventory fill rate North America uh, phone, inventory fill rate North America tablet, and then pending orders North America. So three ways that you could find out this answer um, based on metrics that exist. I have to assume that it's based on metrics that already exist. And um, yeah, let's, let's, let's play this out to see what's going on. I like the social element telling you which one most people follow. Maybe it should be sorted that way, right? So most people are probably just going to go to inventory fill rate, North America, tablet. But the context of tablet and phone is super interesting. Um, I wonder if there's an inventory fill rate, North America view of which tablet and phone are actual filters. And so maybe there's some nesting and some hierarchy work that could work here to say that these are the same metric with different options. That could be a nice uh, little interaction. But anyway, let's, let's play this through. And there you have it. You another a metric, metric another insight. I'll answer my question. So that kind of does answer my question. Inventory for rate is the metric. North America is a regional filter. Category is a regional filter. And the month-to-month -month comparison is, again, contextual. Now, now, what is interesting is I think they've kept the month-to-month -month comparison um, consistent across these, but uh, you do get an indicator that says low. I assume you have like certain thresholds where you can set that when you build the metric uh, in here. You have an overview and then you have a breakdown view. We'll see what that is in a second. Um, you've got this little light bulb. So inventory fill rate for first of that is now 91%. A drop below the expected range of 95 to 92. That doesn't mean it's bad. Um, a new unfavorable trend has been detected for inventory fill rate. It's trending down compared to the previous trend. You see, that's an interesting one. Like, if you have a blockbuster sales event, then you will get an unfavorable inventory fill rate, right? And so that is maybe a, like a false positive, right? It is bad. But if it's off the back of a really successful sales period, let's say you sell out of a product, that's not a bad thing. Um, it, especially if you <laughs> sold every one that you made and you can't make them fast enough, um, that maybe leads to other questions around price and availability and resources and material, right? So that could be something that scales unfavorably, unfavorably with Tableau metrics, right? Lots of false positive where people are going in, it's saying something's unfavorable, but you go and look at it and you're like, well, that makes total sense. In fact, that happens all the time because I just ran a promotion and I expect my inventory for it to be super low because you build up stock to you know, release them all at once, Easter eggs, uh, Christmas, uh, uh, Halloween. These are all events that will have incredibly low infill inventory fill rates right after they've happened. You're not going to have a high fill rate for something like turkeys. So how does the system understand that content? How do you feed that content into the system, into these metrics to help you sort of understand that? So super interesting challenge for Tableau to figure out there. At the speed of thought. Now, what's happening behind the scenes is Pulse detects business critical insights such as drivers, trend, forecasts, and outliers, mm -hmm. all with trusted statistical calculations from Tableau, where AI can make the language more consumable and deliver them to you proactively so that all of us can see and understand data. So I actually agree with that framing of AI. I think it's a really good way of putting it. Um, AI is like an interface to the data. It allows you to ask a question and find the answer, and it's helping sort of synthesize 
what you want out of the data. Um, what is interesting is <laughs> in the background, is AI doing the hard work or is it actually not just AI doing the hard work? Is there actually some other more complex thing going on? Are analysts setting up these metrics and building out these contexts like we've seen in the past with our data? Who is doing that work? Who is setting the contextual landscape for this AI machine to go off and understand how things work? So that is super interesting. Now we do have a new chart here. This one's amber, so let's try and figure out why. Now you ask, what is the projected inventory flow rate? Right? Uh, so I think it's drawn this amber chart. Um, again, this was out of the fold, wasn't it? We landed on this page and it's only now that we've scrolled down, it might be because the demo screen is small and it's the laptop, but kind of valid, sort of vilifies my point earlier on. <laughs> this, this nice little chart was <laughs> out of the fold. So we didn't actually see it until you scroll down. But if this trend continues, inventory fill rate for phones is predicted to be 89%. Cool. Is that a good or bad? That's fine. That might be fine if you've just had a new iPhone, for example. Um, the new iPhone has just come out and you can't get any until November already, as is always the case. because you know, People just want new phones every year, apparently. But that's not a bad thing when you can't fill inventory that fast for a new product. That happens every single year. So who sets the context to say this is good or bad, right? <clears throat> Can you tell the system that only let me know if it's if it's below 10%, set a 10% threshold for inventory fill rate. If it falls below this, then we're going to have long-term supply issues and long-term demand issues and long-term fulfillment issues, right? Where is that sort of capability? Anyway, let's play on. But it doesn't stop there. What if I want to stay on top of these changes and share my findings? Okay. Well, in just two clicks here, my entire team now is following inventory fill rate so that they can start tracking and acting on it too. So if this is Tableau Pulse, and this is going to sit inside a Tableau Cloud, that interface we just saw there is completely different to the sharing interface we see today. Side by side, they're just not the same. I'll try and put a screenshot of it up on screen. Um, yeah, they're just not the same. So there's a whole lot of, let's say, um, uh, staging here that if it's genuinely going to be available in uh, December as we're seeing it like this wow there's a lot of change coming to the tablet platform definitely and just to <coughs> confirm that I can back out to my personal homepage where I'll be able to see inventory <clears throat> fill rate and I'll say other metrics that I care about <clears throat> so let's look at this as well device sales had an unusual spike yep these are the same three summaries that we saw before there's always this sort of, was this helpful up or down? It feels like this is sort of like um, you're training the model on what you find useful. And if you do enough of these, eventually over time, they'll just probably stop asking you because they know, right? Google Google used to do this. It used to ask you what you thought of a, a link. And then they just eventually stopped because they figured out a way of figuring it out without having to ask you. So uh, maybe something we see in the early stages of this kind of technology, but in the future, it will just know. They'll just know based on metrics, like how much time you spent, how much you engaged with it. And then they'll start to sort of train analysts on how to create engaging metrics that actually drive actions and stuff like that. So super interesting. There are three metrics. Who knows what's uh, below the fold? Um, all metrics means probably everything that's shared with you, whereas the ones you're following are the ones you passionately care about. The best part is Pulse isn't just limited to Tableau. It's everywhere you and your teams work today. Like an email where you can receive a daily dose of your metrics. Let's ask April from my team here. Did you get it? Yep. Awesome. <clears throat> there you go. So you get a nice email and hmm, Tableau Pulse. Oh, interesting. That looks like a Pulse tab inside of the Tableau mobile app, right? That's what that's got to be. Um, that's all I can assume it is. Uh, you have Home and Explore, which are two tabs you get in Tableau today. Home is like your know, favorites and everything you follow. Explore is the classic Explore tab. Pulse feels like it's going to be a new tab, which means probably when it comes to cloud, it will also be its own little side tab. It might even be the default place you start to go then to find other things. So it all makes sense. On your phone, where you can receive insights on the go. I am scrolling through them right now. And of course, in Slack, as you saw earlier, we get to collaborate more easily. But here at Dreamforce, we all care about Salesforce, don't we? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> I land in Salesforce and find the silence. <laughs> the traditional tabloid kind of customer doesn't care about Salesforce. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. But yes, uh, he was kind of hoping they'd all say Salesforce and uh, didn't quite land that one. But this is Tableau Pass inside of Salesforce. Now, it's interesting that as soon as it goes to Salesforce, it feels different, doesn't it? It looks slightly different. And Einstein has popped up already and you've got a slightly different sort of layout. It feels like a more Salesforce-centric version of Pulse. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, there's something called Omnichannel Macros. I love seeing what else is on screen whenever you take like a screen grab like this because it kind of shows you the context of what people are thinking. Einstein is sitting in the corner there so you can ask some questions, but it's more or less the same thing. Um, this might be like a new Lightning web component that sits specifically inside of Tableau. Uh, there is a new one for uh, Tableau in 23.3. And so this might be like a Pulse extension of that, which is kind of nice. Pulse homepage deeply embedded with all my favorite metrics in one place. And clicking into the metric here, I see the same detail view with the same mm -hmm. interaction that we've seen. Okay. So that answers the question. You have to have Tableau Cloud to have that kind of integration. I don't see how you achieve that with a Tableau server behind firewalls. Uh, it just doesn't seem to work. So that might be a nicety you only get inside of um, Tableau uh, Cloud. But uh, with Tableau Server, you might be able to use something like connected apps to allow this to happen uh, and get that working. But yeah. That's off. Let's rewind. We trust it. We're familiar with it. It's quick to find and easy to use. Now, all of us can truly succeed from anywhere. And this is Tableau Pulse. Metrics and insights reimagined, powered by Tableau AI to enhance and accelerate everyone, to make informed decisions fast, and to take actions on data.